Hello everybody, Squillia McDoodle Fart here, and today you are watching the first video of a series that I'm going to be calling Spooky Month, which, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't think of a better title. What's Spooky Month, you ask? Well, the entire month of October, I'm going to be uploading horror-themed videos. So for today's video, I'm going to be going over the 1984 horror classic, Wes Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street. So, uh, yeah, you guys probably know the drill at this point. Just kick back and enjoy this fucking stupid video I pulled out of my ass. <laughs> the movie opens up with Freddy making his iconic glove, and after the title card, we immediately jump to this bitch's nightmare, where she's walking down a dark hallway, goat, before making her way to a boiler room. Freddy pops out from behind a curtain and begins to chase her. Once she thinks she got away, he pops out from behind her, jump scaring her awake. You okay, Tina? Just a dream, Mom. Later that day, we see her talking to her friends about the nightmare she had that night. One of her friends being played by Johnny Depp in his first ever acting role. Also, the blonde has a greaser boyfriend that instantly dates this movie and it's fucking hilarious. Hey, up yours with a twirling lawnmower. Anyway, they tell her that it's only a dream and to just forget about it. Such great advice. Let's see how it works out for her later. <laughs> Later that night, they're all hanging out at the Burnett's house, and we find out that both of them were having similar dreams. They hear a weird noise outside and send Depp to go check it out, because it's all equal rights this and patriarchy that until the fucking serial killers come, huh? Just kidding, it's the lost member of the Ramones doing a little trolling. And after some violent monkey fucking, he reveals that he too has been having nightmares similar to the ones Nancy and Tina have been having. Who do you think you are? Classic scene where Freddy appears in Nancy's wall, and now it's time for the first kill of the movie. Tina walks into an alleyway after hearing her name being whispered, and Freddy Spaghetti comes out looking like the you're fired scene from Robocop. He chases her down, cuts off his fingers, rips off his face, and upon catching her, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> The police investigate the murder and come to the conclusion that Pony Boy is responsible, despite Nancy being hell bent on his innocence. At school, Nancy has a nightmare where she leaves her classroom to find an invisible being dragging her friend's corpse. When she follows the dragging corpse, she runs into some fat bitch who talks like Freddy and is wearing his sweater. Hmm, nothing suspicious here? What's going on in this boiler room? Holy shit, it's Spawn! Who are you? I don't think that answered her question. She wakes up screaming in the classroom and notices that the mark on her wrist from where she burned herself in the dream is still there in the real world. She goes to visit John, John Stamos, Stamos in prison, prison and she finds out that he, he too has had dreams about Freddy, which is something that we already knew. Ooh. She goes home and takes a bath while singing Freddy Krueger's theme song. Okay, whatever, get drowned, bitch. Of course, she survives, she's the main character after all, but she finds some stay awake pills in her medicine cabinet, so she decides to take them. Later that night, Deppy Buns randomly showed up to her bedroom window, probably wanting to bone. Instead, Nancy asked him to watch her while she sleeps so she can visit Elvis Travolta in her dreams. But Crybaby falls asleep, so when Freddy pops up, he wasn't able to wake her up. Oh no, what will happen to our main character? She survives. What I do? Men, we don't know what we did. Instead, the next to die is the Fonz's illegitimate son. Hey! Nancy's parents still think that she's just going crazy, so they send her to some mystery 80s dream analyst that every hospital has. And here's where she finds out that whatever happens in her dream happens in real life when she pulls Freddy's hat out of her ass. 
At home, Nancy confronts her bitch mom for basically gaslighting her into thinking that she was insane. As it turns out, when Freddy was alive, he was a notorious child murderer, and because the police wouldn't do anything about it, the parents took it upon themselves to trap Freddy and burn him alive. Later, she calls half of 21 Jump Street to devise a plan to catch Freddy, and thank God for cunty 80s parents because their son is fucking dead. <laughs> The movie turns into a precursor to Home Alone for a bit while she sets up traps in her room, falls asleep, and Freddy gets hit with said traps. Until she wakes up while she has a hold of Freddy, bringing him into the real world. <laughs> I'm crazy after all. Freddy chases Nancy into the basement where she lights him on fire. I love how Freddy's screams of pain sound like Chewbacca. Since the mom barred up the house, not with Xanax, I mean actual iron bars, Nancy can't escape, so she breaks the window and calls for her dad, who's already next door investigating Jack Sparrow's murder. But when the cops get inside, Nancy discovers fiery footprints leading upstairs. Be mind on fire! Me stole on fire, feeling hot, hot, hot. The dad covers up Freddy, putting out the fire. It's unknown if he actually saw Freddy, but it is implied that he did see the mom's charred remains disappear into the bed, which is honestly fucking confusing the more I think about it. Well, my wife is dead. Nancy, you're old enough to procreate, right? Unacceptable! After being left alone, Nancy tells Freddy off by saying, You don't exist, this is just a dream, and it fucking works. She's transported outside where it's all sunny and her mom and friends are all alive. Hooray! Psych bitch Freddy! <laughs> Needless to say, this was a great movie. While a little cheesy and dated in some places, that's all par for the course when it comes to 80s movies. But considering the fact that the majority of slasher movies before this has just been some crazy nigga in a mask, Nightmare on Elm Street brought a new twist to the slasher genre that paid off in the long run considering the fact that Freddy Krueger is now one of the most iconic killers in horror. While the sequels brought us those comedic one-liners that Freddy is most known for, I like how this movie is more focused on horror than anything else. The only thing I have against this movie is the pacing could have been a lot better, and the rules for the dream world versus reality definitely could have been developed a bit more. But luckily, since Hollywood is hell-bent on remaking everything, I wouldn't mind seeing a remake to this movie that isn't boring as hell like the 2010 remake, or a remake that doesn't only exist to push a stupid fucking agenda like the other ones we've been getting today. In conclusion, Nightmare on Elm Street is an 8 out of 10 and House Party 2023 sucked fucking dick. Started thinking about a normal life, got me suicidal. Standing in the kitchen with a noose and a rifle. Hang a bang, hocking movies in a Bible. Dancing with the devil, tonight's our first recital. Hands on my hips to take control of my movement. Couple of minutes pass and I don't know what I'm doing. Just dancing to the music, so nobody will laugh at me. Motherfucking voices in my head keep asking me. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Have you ever danced with the devil?